find myself. That Lord, you told me that you were right here with me. When I feel like I don't got the strength to get up, he make a way out of nowhere. My God just good like that, baby. When my bank account looking a little low, somehow anyway because he already done more than enough so that's the mindset you gotta have that if he don't do nothing else he already done enough Thank you, Lord. Psalms 121 if you have it in your Bible come on read it along with me it says I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help my help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer my foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor shall neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is thy keeper the Lord is my shade upon my right hand the shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. My God. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Even this time and forevermore. Yes. You may take your seats. God what a mighty God that I serve today. What an amazing Father you are to each and every one of us, Lord. God, we just ask that you have your way among all of us today, Lord God. We're here surrendering unto you, Lord God. We're here seeking a word from you, Lord God. Lord, we know, Father God, that we need you in every single thing that we do in life, Lord God. God, we want to honor you with our whole heart, Lord God, and not just with our lips, Lord God. God, we ask that you move in this place today. From the front to the back, Lord, that you'll give us all things common, Lord God. That means unity, Father. Lord, we want to be on one accord today, Lord God. We want to be pleasing before you, Lord God. We just want to glorify you in a way, Lord God, that honors you, Father God. Lord, we just want to thank you for our Savior, Jesus. Because if it had not been for Jesus, who paid the price for us, Lord God, we would still be sinking deep in sin, Lord God. So, Father God, we just ask, Lord, that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you would touch our minds and our hearts, that they would be prepared before you today, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to just move in us, Lord God, that our spirits will be clean, that our minds might be right, that we might be renewed in your image, Lord God, and that we might forever, Lord God, glorify you before the whole world, Lord God, walking about, Lord God, letting our light shine, that me and might see our Father good works who are in heaven and glorify you for who you are, Lord God. God, I just thank you for the privilege, Lord God. And I ask that you will sanctify me, Lord God. For I am merely your woman servant, Lord God. Seeking to be used by you in any way that seems fit in your sight. God, I'm neither worthy nor fit, Lord God. But your word cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God, I thank you this hour, Lord God, for who you are, for what you do, and just for being God all by yourself. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But let me say once again to all the fathers in the house today, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Father's Day is typically a holiday when we honor all fathers for fatherhood, for those who have paternal bonds, for those who have influence as being fathers in society. It's a time when we celebrate the men or the man in our lives or in the lives of our children to show that father appreciation for what he has done. To the fathers out there today, we salute you. 
to the ones who stood in the gap and uplifted and covered those who were not in your bloodline, we salute you too. Amen. To our Heavenly Father, ah. oh yes, we thank you, Lord. He's a father who ain't never been laid on his child's support. He's a father that shows up on time every time. He's a father who was with you in every graduation, every birthday, every tragic situation that you face. He's a father that was with you in the hospital business. He's a father that wiped your weeping out. He's a father that didn't judge you but corrected you and still stayed by your side. We say happy Father's Day to our Heavenly Father today. Because he's worthy of all our praise. See, I like to talk to God like that. Because he is just like that to me. My earthly father has gone on to glory. But God is still right here with me. That's why Jesus said, why seek ye him among the dead? You ain't got to go to the graves to try to reach God. You can talk to God anytime, every day. I'm not going to be before you long today. But I want us to meditate on this song. Because if you live long enough, if you live long enough, you're going to make some mistakes in your life. And no matter how much you try to avoid or prevent trouble from coming your way, sometimes trouble finds you anyway. But trouble sometimes is not necessarily a bad thing. Because trouble exposes who you are and what you say you are. Trouble shows us our true character when we are under attack. And trouble shows us what we rely on, who we believe in, when we are walking this journey that we call life. If trouble doesn't come in our life, some of us have never grown. Because you won't have anything to measure how you're moving forward or how you're going back. This Psalms 121 says, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Simply saying, I will not be afraid to look trouble in the face because I'm not alone. David was looking at a distance. But let me give you some history. David wrote this song. He penned this song when he was hiding out in the hills. And some people believe that it's a song that the sojourners or the pilgrims used when they would travel to Jerusalem during the seasons of the festival. And so this psalm is confirming and affirming to us that God is on our side. Amen. David assures himself while he's in the hills hiding out that God is my help. And because he's assuring himself that God is his help, everybody that's around him, he tells them that God is your help too. David imagines God as his protector. Because David's position is that God is always with me even when I don't see him. Let me say that again. That God is with me even when I don't see him. That though he may seem far away from me, when I look to him, he still hears me when I cry. David understood that you can have difficult times in your life and trying situations. But the same God that was with you before and brought you out, will be the same God that I see you through again. David didn't judge his current situation by what it looked like. He judged his situation by knowing that God was able. I want you to consider for the day for our subject, the highest kind of help. The highest kind of help. I was on Facebook, every now and then I troll it. And I think I saw a post, because y'all know Abby can't keep nothing to herself. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and on her Facebook post, she said, I'm going to be vending that guy coming. Yeah. Now, I know that might not seem significant to many of you all. But for those that are intimate with her story, know that she worked at Geico for approximately 12 years. And she struggled and toiled within herself about this vision, this mission, this, this hobby that God had put in her spirit. And she stepped out on faith one day and left her job. Amen. She didn't know how God was going to work it out. She didn't know if God was going to work it out. She didn't know how she was going to make her bills. But she just believed if I stick to it, that God will see me through. She walked away from that job. 
And what did God do? He honored her faith. Y'all see her on Facebook. Every time she turned around, she said, talking about these butters. She called herself the butter baby. But this sermon ain't about hiding. But I just want to give you some, some perspective. She understood that in the difficult times that I can trust God. She understood that he is the highest help that I will ever know. That even when she was going through and was reduced to one income, that God still made her way out of nowhere. When she was out there trying to hustle and bust and saw her husband in the hospital, she was still trusting in the Lord our God. And she said that if God make a way for me, I won't keep it to myself. Every opportunity I get, I will tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. That's just what David was doing. David said, I don't care where I journey and in life. I know that God got my back. He said, even if my enemies encamp all around me, I know that God is my hedge of protection. He said, I don't care who's talking about me, who's trying to pull me down to their level. They can't move me out of the position that God has given unto me. David said, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. He said, I ain't going to lead to my own understanding. But you got to understand that David, faith, never wavered in the God that he served. Because even though he was hiding out in those hills, he would sit back and he would just reflect on the goodness of God. He would encourage himself and he would encourage others that when they found themselves in distress, that God is still a present God. Today, this psalm is very commonly used for people, again, when they're trapped. They use this psalm as a, a form of protection to remind themselves that when they're going up to the high places, that God is still with them. When they don't see the danger, that God is still with them. That when they're subject to those who are lying and wait for them, that God is still with them. See, David founded Jerusalem, and he made it his capital. And Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains, and it's believed that Jerusalem is called the holy city. That's why they call it the city of God. See, Jerusalem is situated on a high hill where it is high above all the other countries that it sits on top of. And the Jews were required during festival season to take their pilgrimage, to walk to this holy place, to honor God for all that he had done. Because after all, Jerusalem was the first place where the temple of God was built. And they believed that the higher that they ascended, the closer they got with God. See, this Psalm 121, is one of those songs that's a part of a collection which is called the Song of Ascent. Because they would use it every time they went out their homes and every time they came in to remind them that God was always traveling along the way with them. And you got to do that too. That when you own your job, you got to remind yourself that God is right there with you. There are three simple things that I want us to take away from this, this, sermon, this subject today. And that is, I want us to hold this in our heart. And the first point is that no matter what's happening in our life, that my, my God, make it personal, that my God must be the author and the finisher of my faith. No matter what's going on, everything got to start out with God. And if I'm following God's direction, how can I go on? I said, if I'm following God's direction. In other words, I need to pray about everything in my life, and I need to constantly pray over my life. I need to pray about everything in my life, and I need to constantly pray over my life. I must believe that God can and God will work out anything out in my life that hinders my progress. If I want God results, I got to do it God's way. You can't lead yourself being prayed to God and ask him to show you the way. Because if you're going to show yourself the way, what you're praying to God for? If you want God to do it, then get out of the way. If you want God to possess and you want to be blessed, then you got to yield and obey. It ain't hard to do. That's what David had to find out. Every time David got in front of God, David messed up. But David had enough sense to know to go back and ask God for forgiveness. He will plead all day and all night with God and ask God to forgive him for the works that he did. But he won't foolish enough to think that God will still give him a consequence for his behavior. But David knew and understood that sometimes I deserve where I put myself in. But he also understood that even 
though God might spank my behind, God won't move me from his side. Even though God might correct the behavior, God still sees me as his child. And the moment that I get back right with God and get in line with God, I'll still be walking with God. See, as Dr. Daniels used to all the say, that God ain't got no stepchildren. But every now and again, God has got children on the step. I hope you ain't mind I borrowed that, sir, but it rings true today. But every now and again, we act like we don't know that God is large and in charge. But David understood that if it was not for God with me, if it was not for God leading me, if it was not for God protecting me, where in the world would I be? He understood that I would be at the mercy of those that were trying to divide me and turn me apart. I would be at the mercy who would be trying to take everything that I worked so hard for. But David understood one simple concept, that if I know that God will preserve me, I know that he'll keep me intact. You got to have that kind of faith today, that God is the author and the finisher of your soul. You got to know that in patience, that's what the Bible says, you need patience. It says that in your patience, you possess your soul. It says that God will use patience to develop you. I like you. Oh, I know y'all don't want to hear that. God will use patience to develop the characteristics in you that you need to make you better than what you were before. Because all of us are a work in progress. All of us come to God asking God to do something different in our life. But none of us act like we want to change. Oh my God. That's something I'm going to ask God to bless me, but I don't want to do nothing to get blessed. She asked God to bless her, and guess what she did? She went in her kitchen. She turned on her blender. She poured some stuff in there. She made them bottles. She said, I ain't going to wait on nobody. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to knock on the door and say, you want to buy these bottles? She said, I ain't going to wait for nobody to market me. I'm going to market myself. You got to have that kind of faith to understand that your help comes from the highest place. The second point I want you to understand today is that the Lord is your keeper, my Lord. When you know that the Lord is your keeper, you know that God watches over you. God is available to give us help in times of need. Just as God was with David in every battle he faced, God will carry you through too. God kept them safe when they traveled down the dangerous paths, when the robbers would be waiting. God prevented the attack. History teaches us I want you to hear this. Your history ought to teach you that as many times that you know that God delivered you, why would he change now? Why would he not respond to you when you are in your greatest time of distress or in despair? God won't let nobody take advantage of you. Why? Because God cares for you. My third point that I want you to keep in your heart today is that God, as I said before, is on your side. I can't say that one enough, because that's a real person to me. See, when God is on my side, he's with me everywhere I go. He's with me in the doctor's office. He's with me in the courtroom. He's with me in the grocery store. And this God Almighty, I need him in the grocery store. Because the way these prices are these days, I need God to come see about me. He's not only with me in the grocery store, he's with me when I do things that I ought not to be doing. He don't need me by myself. He with me on my job protecting me and securing me, advising me and strengthening me when other folk plotting against me. He's with me on my sick bed when I don't know what to do. When God is on your side, he's traveling all along, all in the world, right along with you. Why? Because God never fails. That's why you can call on him in the morning. You can call on him in the evening. You can call on him in the midnight hour. You can lean and depend on him. Why? Because you're safe in his arms. And just like them every now and again, I got to look back over my life. I got to look back over my life and truly say that I've been blessed. That I
The third thing you gotta recognize is that you are not alone and that God is compassionate and that God's care for us is both limitless. It's limitless. God is not a God that you can come to one time, two times. I'm so glad that I don't use my ability to go to him as many times as I need to. You know how you might be seeking help and you go to an agency and they say you can only come one time a year. But God, he ain't like that. He said you can come before him daily and confess your faults. And he is faithful and just to forgive you if you ask for it. We must offer to God the sacrifice of praise. See, David, he was mindful of that. That in the good times, I'm going to praise God. In the bad times, I'm going to praise God. Because he understood that God was concerned with who he was. And God is concerned with us. God is concerned with how we see him in our life. God is not just this majestic God that is so far off. That's why David said, I look to the hills. He was talking about distance. He was talking about time. He was saying, I can see him afar off, even though I ain't got there yet. I know he's going to keep me in the process, even while I'm in transition. See, some of us think that I can't get a breakthrough with God unless I get somebody else to pray for me. But what kind of sense does that make? Especially when Jesus said, I died for your sins. Especially when he said, whosoever will come, let him come. He didn't say, get that person to come from you for you. He said, if you will come, come. Oh, it's the highest kind of help that I know. When you have a thankful heart, when you understand what sacrifice of praise is, you understand that sacrifice means that something has been set apart for future use. So my praise can be stored up for what God has not yet done, but for what I know he about to do. You ever had this anticipation in your spirit that something is about to happen? You don't know what it is. You don't know when it's coming, but it just feels good. You just trust God to bring in the pattern. And so you start praising him anyhow. That no matter the bad news you get on the phone, you still know that God put this down in your spirit. That's just how David was. That no matter what his situation looked like, no matter how strong the attacks were in his life, no matter how many people gathered together against him, he knew that God was the person who would preserve him, who would keep his soul. Can you imagine being in a cave, hiding out? Don't know when it's time to come out every time. Can you imagine what that would do to your mind to be secluded and isolated? But David knew that God would keep his mind intact. Why is that important for you to think about? Because the first sign of trouble that we get in our lives we tend to retreat. We go back in instead of coming out. We run from God instead of running to God. We go in our rooms and won't pick up our phone. We don't want nobody to come by the house. We don't want nobody to see us. All because you want to soak in that thing. Even though you keep asking God for relief. But in order to get the relief, you got to let God work it out for you. The way that God wants to work it out for you. And sometimes the way that God works it out doesn't always seem familiar. So with a thankful heart and asking God to take our ashes and turn them into joy. Because that's what you want God to do. To turn your mourning into dancing. See, David knew every opportunity was an opportunity for God to prosper him. He understood that as long as I am in God's providential care, that I'm going to be blessed. And I tell you, when I woke up yesterday, I was reading as often I do in the scriptures. And I was in Second Chronicles. Something just really hit me and stuck with me. And I was reading about Hezekiah. And I was reading about the Levites and the ministers. And so the Levites are those that are of the Levitical priesthood that God chose to be ministers over his people. 
And so everyone of the tribe of Levi, of Levi is a Levite, but not every Levite was a minister. But in order to be a minister, you had to be from the Levitical priesthood because that was God's order. And so the order would be set up that God would set over the administration, of course, of the duties in which they were supposed to perform when they would be in the temple. And so some people were set aside for the holy things. They were consecrated, right? Just anybody could preside over it. So you had to be the one that was appointed by God to be able to do this thing. And it said that when they did that thing, the people came in. They brought their tithes, they brought their offerings, and it was so much, it was so much that they had lack of nothing because God was so pleased with them that he blessed the people abundantly. It said that he blessed the people so much that they had to create a space to store up the extra stuff. Now, why was that so significant to me? Because when I kept reading a little further, it was talking about Hezekiah had purpose in his heart to do everything with all his heart unto God. So what I was able to walk away with, just like with David, is that David had a heart that he wanted to serve God. He wanted to do it with everything that was in him, even if he won't all the way right. And y'all know David won't all the way right sometimes. But yet God loved him with everything that he had. And then David was sincere about the business of the Lord. He didn't let emotion get in the way. He said, if this is God's order, then this how it's going to be done. And that's just what Hezekiah did too. And it says, as long as the people follow that concept, it said, that's what it said in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, that the people were blessed and that they lacked nothing. I don't know about y'all, but, but I'm just crazy enough to walk and follow God. Everywhere he tell me to go. It's important that you understand that sometimes asking for help can be hard. But I want you to know that God is bigger than any problem you face. That if God made the hills we climb and the mountains that we face, before anything there was, the Bible says there was God. And God made the mountains and the hills. So can he get you over what he created? God will prosper our steps. And God will preserve us. God will keep us in all of our afflictions. Because his care for us is not temporary. It's permanent. I need y'all to catch that. God loves you so much. that he's concerned about every affair in your life. And I'm so glad about that thing today. Because it is the highest help that I know. If I didn't know where my help come from, I would be falling out. But I'm so glad I know I can look to the hills from which comes my help. The psalmist says that I can look both now and forevermore. When you see that in the scripture, that means God is in the details. Oh my God. God is in every facet of your life. You don't see him because sometimes your mind may be blinded by your choices. And God will never interfere with your choices. As long as you think you can make them, he's going to let you make them. But the mere moment that you recognize that you need help, he's right there with you. He's able to be there with you when folk turn their back on you. He's able to be there with you when your baby need a brand new pair of shoes. He's able to be there with you when you got that light bill due. He's able to be there with you when you can't afford to do the things that you want to do. God is your help. And God will be with you each and every time that you ask. See, even though you see the hills before you, and I want you to know that the hills are a slope, it's a high peak. They may look like there are high places in your life that prevent you from reaching your destination. But because you see it as a risk, but how many people know that sometimes to take risks, it gives rewards? See, even though these hills were there, even though those mountains were there, they still climbed up to the top 
because they believed that God dwelt in the mountains. So they were risk and hazard themselves just to get close to God. Good God Almighty. You can't. You don't even want to get down on bending knee. But they climbing mountains and hills. They facing robbers and murders just to get close to their God. Because they believe that God got everything that they need. But all you got to do is open your mouth and say, God, I stand in the need of prayer. And the Bible says that if you call on his name, the name of Jesus, which is his son, it says you will never be ashamed. It says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, it says you shall be saved. I keep calling on his name over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because I need God to show up each and every time. Every time. When you look at those mountains, my Lord, those mountains look so big sometimes. Those mountains look like I'm defeated already before I get there. But see, those mountains, it's a high elevation above the earth's surface. God is above and when God lets you get to the top of it, that means that everything that was below you, uh -huh. you are over it. Oh. And it is not over you. <laughs> what am I trying to say to you? That you can make it through. Yeah. Just like wow. David made it through. Wow. Why? Because God is your highest help. Yes, I want to take the time to open up the doors of the church. This sermon today, quick one. But God said, This is what I want you to give to the people. Because Enoch is praying time and it's time to trust in God. We have been in transition for a very long time. And God was with us. And God will continue to be with us. Amen. If you are out there today, and you have not asked for the help that Psalms 121 says that you need. If you have not made God your father, let's make this a father's day like none other. Come to the one who's able to secure you, to keep your feet from slipping and moving. The one who won't leave you, but help you out of every situation. The one who won't judge you, no matter how many times you fall. If you do not know Jesus, come on down today. We just want to connect you with the one who's able to save your soul. We're just going to ask you. 
to come to the back so we get some information from you, okay? We're going to have prayer for you, okay? All right? God is good. Amen. Amen. Is he the highest help that you have? Is he the highest help that you have? Pray real quick. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so very much, Lord God, for the souls that you have saved this day, Lord God. We thank you for your word that came forth with power. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to change hearts and minds. God, we just thank you for being our God and our Father. And Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for your shed blood on the cross. Thank you for your redeeming grace and thank you for your power. Now, Father, continue to be with us as we leave this place today, but never from your presence. And God, we ask that you will bless the offering that's about to be taken up, Lord God, and that you will sanctify it and use it for kingdom building here on this earth. We pray for the leadership of Enoch Baptist Church, Lord God, that we will continue to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord God. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for being first in our lives, Lord God. We love you, Lord God, and can't thank you enough. It's in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Okay, can I have everyone's attention just for one brief moment? Next Sunday after uh, the 11 o'clock service, there will be a very important church meeting. If you are a member of Enoch Baptist Church, we need you to be present next week for a church meeting. If you are unable to be present, you. you can call the church office and let Deacon Scott know, but we need you to be present if you have the ability to be here. We do ask that you will remain in your seats until the ushers come to your row to escort you out and put your offerings in the offering basket. I want to thank you all for allowing God to just be God in your life. I want to thank y'all for just your smiling faces and magnifying the Lord with me today. Amen. God bless you. May have a smile upon you.